Okay, so first look at the Zeiss 120mm, which um, I've bought on eBay, of course, um, as ever. £50 I paid for this lens. Um, and you're about to see why. Because it's not in the best condition at all. I mean, look at the uh, look at the wrapping. <laughs> I mean, top quality packaging. You can see something inside. Yeah, it was described as not working. I think the aperture is broken. Uh, or the aperture's not working at least. Hopefully all the parts are there and I can uh, put it back together. I mean, I'd be happy if, if everything's there and I can put it back together. That's, that's really all I want. Uh, so yeah, the aperture isn't moving as described. The focus, focus isn't too bad. I think this is like one of the early generation 120 millimeters. Because I think after this came, was it the zebra? The zebra stripes and then you got the black multi-coated. You can see here, on the inside of the, uh, the name ring. I think somebody's tried to get in there. You can see it's quite bashed. I think somebody's had a go. Yeah. Hopefully I can fix it. We're about to find out. I mean, 50 pound off eBay is not so bad. These lenses are worth 180 minimum, I would say. For 50 pound plus five pound postage, I don't think it was too much of a risk. I'm gonna have a quick look to see if I can uh, get into the, see the aperture, see what we're working with. I've got a feeling as well, I'm gonna need to buy a few screws off eBay here because there are screws missing on this rear mount. Okay. Okay, after a bit of digging round, I've been able to release the aperture mechanism, which is amazing news. We're in business. All I need to do is, I guess, take it apart, give it a clean, uh, and put it back together again. I think I can salvage it. It's gonna be okay, I think. Excellent news. So, yeah, I've bought the lens rings now, the rubber lens rings. A further 20 pound, damn it. But I think uh, these are, those would be a decent investment for other lenses that I fix. So I'm not too bothered. Hopefully, hopefully these do the trick. You just never know if these, you know, if somebody's put glue in there or, yeah, it's coming now. You just need the right tools to do the job. There are little marks on the on the front ring. I think somebody's tried to use the uh, like a lens spanner tool. Oh. Okay, speaking of lens spanner tool. And this will release the front element 
and allow us access to the aperture mechanism which is ultimately well ultimately I'm trying to strip it down completely complete disassembly and then complete reassembly okay so front element is out not sure if this front group is sealed the front block I think it may be which is fine which means there's no dust inside I just need to clean the elements front and rear which is which is okay let's just quickly do the the rear element there you go just trying to remove this uh, spacer slash holder that holds the aperture mechanism in place just down here <laughs> well there you go there's the aperture mechanism just need to clean the blades and then reassemble so I mean that's pretty much complete disassembly uh, this I think is a the uh, like one of the first generation of the of this size 120 millimeter and there is uh, there's another element in there uh, but I don't know I might leave that in I'm struggling to get it out so I can get both sides of it to clean it but anyway that is complete disassembly Cleaning the aperture is easily the trickiest thing about this whole process. Uh, taking it apart is one thing, putting it back together is quite another. Lighter fluid, I think, is commonly accepted as the easy degreaser of aperture blades. The glass actually cleaned up pretty well. If you see near the start of this uh, of the film um, and the pictures on eBay in the other video, the glass was pretty. It's just dusty, really, um, and streaky. It just needed a bit clean and uh, a little bit of um, lighter fluid and uh, the Pancro lens cleaner spray with a microfiber cloth. Uh, they actually came up pretty well. It's going to be absolutely fine. back to the aperture which is this this part the layering in of the blades is easily the hardest part uh, the first five six seven blades are okay but once you get to the final one which you need to weave in to complete the, the circle is very tricky but once you've done one you know you know it's possible and it is doable There were parts of this process that I didn't film. Uh, it just wasn't possible to film and work at the same time. It was very, some of it's very tricky and very intricate. And also, you know, is a lot of try and try again, which doesn't really make for good content, I don't think. Uh, but now we're basically just uh, reassembling the lens in reverse order. The one good thing about filming the disassembly was you know exactly how it goes together. But there were a few issues, like there were a couple of springs missing actually, which I... When the owner said parts might be missing, yeah. There was a couple of springs missing, which are actually easily replaceable as part of the aperture mechanism. Or the, the stop-down me mechanism, the little lead that comes out the back. But generally, uh, I regard this uh, little project as a success.
yeah, this this lever on the back, the stop down aperture lever, um, that had a spring missing, which I needed to replace. I didn't film it because it was too much of a pain in the ass. All in all, uh, huge success. <laughs>